Hello and welcome to round two of W Series. Hello and welcome to round two of W Series 2022 season. It's round two, but it's actually race number three for us here. I'm in the commentary box with my favorite friend, Billy Monger. Billy, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Naomi. Uh, good to be back in Europe after Miami, which was uh, a hectic weekend, but really entertaining, good racing, and uh, W Series is back. Certainly, I mean, there was action-packed racing in Miami. A lot of heat to deal with. It is hot out here in Barcelona, but not quite as hot as it was in Miami, isn't it? Yeah, no, Miami was uh, a scorcher. It does look like it's going to be uh, another scorcher for Europe out here, but yeah, like not quite the same level as we saw in Miami. But uh, for the drivers, obviously, this is a track that through pre-season testing and stuff, they will know well. So it's a, a different kind of challenge to what they faced in a, facing a new circuit out in uh, Miami. So a little bit different for them this weekend. Well, it's obviously early doors. The drivers are just getting onto the track, a track that, as Billy mentioned, they already know. We had a couple of days of testing here in March. Um, some drivers actually reported, funnily enough, that there was a lot of tire deg on this track. So I think that'll be something we're going to have to look out for this weekend. Yeah, and uh, that is definitely a factor with Barcelona. There's a lot of high, medium speed corners here. Uh, it takes a lot from the tires and uh, it's a track that uh, you kind of have to build your pace throughout the weekend because it's a real rhythm track from from memory when I drove it back in uh, 2019. Uh, it's, a, it's a track that quite physically demanding on the drivers as well. A lot of neck strength that will be required, go, especially going through uh, turn three there, as we just saw uh, just down in the paddock now, looking at all the W Series stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, like I say, it's early in the, the practice session, so at this stage the drivers are really just getting back in the cars and trying to feel everything out before they start setting some lap times. So out in Miami, we had our two-time W Series champion, Jamie Chadwick, win both of the races. Um, and actually, interesting fact, Billy, I don't know if you knew this, but um, that makes Jamie, firstly, um, the first person to win a race at the Miami International Autodrome and also the only person to ever win two races at the Miami International Autodrome. Well, that's a pretty good stat to have in your back pocket if you're Jamie Chadwick, isn't it? I mean, she's got to be pretty happy with the start to the season she's had. And I mean, we always expected her to be up the front because of the track record and the pedigree she's got in the championship, obviously being the reigning champion. But I think she couldn't have even dreamed for a start that good. So now we're riding with Beitzkevisse, our Dutch driver, one of our two Dutch drivers this season. Beitzkevisse came into season one as one of the hottest prospects uh, and had a very successful season finishing second. Uh, last year wasn't really the best of years for her. How do you think she's going to be approaching this year differently? I think, uh, yeah, she's, she came into the series in the first uh, first year and she was really, like you say, hot property right up at the front end of the grid and and the things have started to not really progress for her in the way I think she would be hoping for because if she gets things right and we have seen flashes of that from her, we know that she could be com competing for wins and being on the podium at least. We know she's got that sort of pace but it just seems that on a consistent base. She can't really find that every time she gets in the car. So I'm sure for her this year, it's going to be all about consistency. One thing I think is probably interesting to talk about as well, Beitzke had a couple of programs last season in terms of racing different categories. Do you think that could have played into maybe her downfall, that you know driving styles can be slightly different? This year, she's purely focusing on W Series. Could that help? Yeah, I think so. I mean, trying to balance driving in multiple different categories is is a real challenge for the drivers because like you say Naomi, mean, with different cars they require different driving styles obviously this is a single seater slicks and wings that's so all about carrying the speed through the corners and using the downforce you get and then you 
go into the likes of GTs and other stuff like that, and the driving style is different. So sometimes that can be quite challenging, uh, particularly if you, I guess, jump from series to series, at, even at the same circuits. You think, oh, I've got track experience and knowledge, I know where to brake, but all of that goes out the window because the braking points change. So sometimes that can make it even harder. And in terms of technique as well, I mean, I know when I came into W Series, I'd been driving GT cars for a couple of years, and the style of braking, even just in the way you touch the pedal with your foot, is completely different. So it's even small things like that that could play into it. Yeah, and I mean, as well, like, W Series is such a competitive championship. I think that's what's so great about the series is, obviously, like you say, when the series sort of made its debut and a lot, of, a lot of drivers were coming from different types of racing to, it, to their first real single-seater experience here. Uh, the fact that that's now changed and a lot of these drivers have had two years' experience of driving these cars, like, it makes it even harder for rookies that haven't, like you said, learned this driving style of this particular car because they've got to get on top of that against competitors that have just had years of practice now in these cars. Talking about rookies, we've got a couple of new drivers uh, this season, a lot of young talent coming into W Series. Um, obviously, Miami is a quite a challenging circuit in that there's no room for error. So I think for them, this will probably be a, tr a better track in, in terms of trying things and you know trying to drive a little bit over the limit, finding the limit, uh, and really just experimenting. Yeah, I think we saw that in Miami. There was um, obviously the rookies were were kind of trying to push with their limits and figure out what was possible in these cars. And we saw a few mistakes. Obviously, it was a street circuit, so it's the sort of circuit that bites back when you make a mistake. Obviously, touching the wall, picking up some damage for a few of the sessions for a few of the lesser experienced drivers that we have on the grid. But in general, I think Barcelona, like you said, they've, at least they've got that track knowledge. They've been around here before all the drivers, so it's nothing new is going to jump out to them from a circuit point of view. Obviously, they had yesterday the chance to walk the track, go for everything with their engineers, and I feel like a lot of them will have be glad that the first weekend's over because it was a doubleheader first race of the season in Miami. There was a lot of pressure probably that came with that, uh, and it's sort of back to familiar territory for them. So hopefully they can use that and sort of build their confidence. Well, talking about our rookies, we've got one who's had some experience with W Series, but is doing her first full season with W Series this year, Abby Pulling. Uh, you know, quick, quick, quick driver. What do you think we can expect from her coming into W Series this season? Yeah, Abby's, she's really impressive. I mean, obviously, she her coaching background is actually from Alice Powell, which I always find fascinating now that they're racing against each other. So Alice Powell who's just gone up to, to P2 in the order here in practice. Yeah, she's um, Abby's driver coach in the lower series, so when Abby was doing a Formula 4 and stuff like that. Uh, and now Abby, at the last weekend uh, in Miami, she actually set the fastest lap in race two, uh, fastest lap we saw around the Miami circuit the whole weekend. So I think Alice is starting to realise that her coaching might be making Abby too quick and make her a real uh, title threat, because I think she, she generally has that underlying pace that she could be in the fight for the title if she can start putting and the pace into results. Maybe Alice won't be sharing too many of her secrets this weekend. Uh, just saw a purple sector there from Jess Hawkins. Let's talk about Jess Hawkins for a second. Obviously, her third year in W Series this year. She's obviously got you know quite a lot of experience under her belt with how W Series works, how what the car's like. But she hasn't really been able to put it together over the years. But had her first podium in Miami, which is obviously going to be a massive confidence boost. Yeah, it's going to be a huge confidence boost for Jess. And uh, we have got a yellow flag on track. That's Norea Marti, the pole sitter in Miami, in the gravel trap there. Uh, and like I say, that yellow flag is in sector two. That looks like it's down at turn 11 there, the long sweep in left-hander after that, that back straight. So it looks like it's beach. That's not a good start to her weekend. Her home raise, obviously, for Norea. She'll be hoping for better. And, yeah, it's a red flag for the session now. Yeah, that's not great to start the, the weekend like that, obviously. You know, we, they come into this weekend, as I said, on this track, there's a little bit more room to push the limit. Uh, there is runoff, but maybe not the best place to... Oh, here we see what's happened. It looked like she was overtaking one of the other drivers. She went on the inside of the track, maybe, obviously, at this stage in the weekend, the track being a bit green and dirty and stuff. And she just looked like she understeered and sort of... There was no major lock-up, but just didn't have the grip to get the car stopped, and then obviously ended up spinning into the gravel. And it obviously looks at the moment like the car's not damaged so hopefully the marshals will be able to sort of push her back onto the circuit and she'll be able to to get back out um yeah just over 20 minutes left of practice so uh 
not like not a great start for Nerea. I'm not obviously saying her home race and everything. There's pressure that comes with that. But her performance in Miami was really, really good. And uh, particularly race two, she challenged Jamie Chadwick the whole way through. Yeah, unfortunately for the moment, the clock is still ticking. So everybody will be losing a little bit of practice time here, which is never what you want when you've only got one practice session on the race weekend. Uh, obviously, we're going into qualifying this evening, so every lap's going to count for everyone. But at least we can say that it's the same for everyone now, and no one is benefiting or losing from this situation. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, like you say, Naomi, everyone's in the same boat with losing a bit of track time here from the result of that red flag. But for, more for the rookies, they'll just be wanting I think most of the drivers, it's all about, uh, like I say, it's a, sort of a rhythm track Barcelona and you need to just build your confidence to push those high speed entry corners uh, further and further, particularly with qualifying being the next session because they don't have the luxury like Formula One does of having a few longer practice sessions to sort of get their eye in. So it is a challenge for the drivers, especially to dial yourself in for that qualifying lap where you've got to kind of put it all on the line. Uh, just seeing Alice Powell here and she was slightly unlucky actually um, in Miami with in qualifying with the red flag that came out when she, it looked like she was set to take pole position uh, so she'll be hoping that red flags this weekend don't cost her dearly like they did in Miami. Yeah, Miami was quite an unlucky weekend for Alice all round. I mean, after, you know, having had that issue in qualifying, then having the issue in the start and having to try to catch up to the group too quickly and, you know, had her incident with the wall. But, you know, she recovered nicely on, on Sunday, um, scoring pretty good points for the championship. So if you're watching us live on YouTube or Twitch, please feel free to send Billy and I some questions and we will try to get them answered for you. Uh, the cars just sort of lining up in the, the pit lane now, just waiting for the Quant Fury W Series racing team car of Nerea Martis to be recovered from the gravel trap so they can get back underway and, um, yeah, start to really set some competitive lap times. Just looking at the lap times at the minute, in the 1 minute 45s for Jamie Chadwick and Belen Garcia. So they're the two drivers that have broken into the 145s. Uh, we can see here now that the sector times between the two. So only four hundredths across the whole lap separating uh, Jamie Chabek and Belen Garcia. And Belen Garcia is a driver that sort of sometimes goes under the radar. Um, but she had some strong results in Miami and looks good in race two particularly. And again, another Spanish driver looking to do well here in Barcelona with the, the home fans behind her. Certainly, I mean, we have three Spanish drivers on our grid, but I must say, Belen Garcia, this is her backyard. She lives right around the corner from the circuit. She knows the circuit better than anyone else. And like you say, we've seen some really good moments from her this season. And I think this could be, you know, her best weekend yet. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I think all the drivers, now they've got Miami out of the way and it's, con it's kind of coming into a sort of crunch time of the series. We're going to get a little replay here. So it was actually Nerea overtaking Emma Kimmelainen and, and yeah, just took to the inside, slightly dirty part of the circuit and just understeered off. And then once she went off of the actual racetrack itself onto the tarmac, there definitely didn't look like there was much grip out there at the rear came around and, oh, that's a shame for Nerea. It looks like that, that car being beached, she's not going to be able to rejoin the circuit and get pushed out. The marshals obviously can't push that car out with the way that the rear tyres are sat in the gravel trap there. So that's her session over, and that's going to make her job a lot trickier come qualifying this evening. Certainly. Well, I guess she'll be relieved knowing that they had a couple of days testing here in March, so she has some information to carry over from then. She's got onboards and a lot of data that she can go through and try to make the most of it for this qualifying session. So we have a question about the academy team. What is it all about and who is in the academy team? So this season, we've got two of our youngest drivers, Juju Noda and Bianca Bustamante, who are in the team. Um, if you're looking at the screen, it is the purple logo with the pink a um it is the, the academy team is set up by w series to bring new talent into the sport and give them a chance to really learn in their first year they're all guaranteed a second year in w series so it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be in the academy team next year for example uh, nerea marty who we've been talking about has graduated from the academy team that she was in last year and is now a part of the quant fury team so basically it's a development platform for young drivers to come in typically it's the youngest drivers on the grid who are in the academy team uh, and they just have the comfort in knowing that they've got two years um, to get it figured out yeah which is something in motorsport that's fairly rare that opportunity to know exactly what championship you're doing and that you're going to be there for a multiple year contracts i mean 
I'm thinking even to the, the higher ranks of the motorsport, the professionals that get paid, sometimes they don't even know what they're going to be racing uh, the next year after they've finished the season. So the fact that, that Juju Noda and Bianca Bustamente, they've, those drivers, the fact that they've got that security, that's got to be really good for confidence because it means they can push and build knowing that if they make a few mistakes this year it's not the end of the world because they've got that chance to come back next year fighting so this is going to be a real learning year for them and we've seen what the academy can do like you said Nerea Marti taking pole positions and podiums in W Series now um, it shows that it is the right way to go to develop that young talent that W Series is, is all about. Indeed, it'll be interesting to see how they develop through the season. Both really young drivers, not with very much experience in the single seater, so they're definitely on the learning curve, but they are learning quite quickly. Um, the track is clear. Um, I think we are waiting to see that green light at the end of the pit lane, and there it is. There they go. Yeah, and uh, you can see a lot of the drivers keen to get back out on track there. Bikes Gavissa leading the pack down the pit lane. Uh, obviously, every minute, every lap of uh, knowledge and experience they can get is uh, going to be vital and actually Bartska Viss has pulled over at the end of the pit there. I think that looks like she's preparing for a practice start uh, which obviously seeing the effects of practice uh, the starts last week last time out in Miami uh, there was a few mistakes and errors that happened from not being able to get the launch properly the clutch clutch just seems to be something to uh, that some of the drivers were struggling with. So I think that the drivers using every opportunity they can just to get another practice start under their belts and kind of build that experience and feel on the clutch pedal. Now, as we know, we're using a different fleet of cars this weekend. So, Billy, you know, when you jump in a different car, even if they're exactly the same spec, there are small details like, you know, the travel on the clutch that might be slightly different. And therefore, it is important each weekend for them to try and feel exactly where that bite point is. Yeah, it, it does change car to car as much as they're meant to be exactly the same. There are minute differences and uh, it's something that... Um, they want to just get on top of and make sure they understand what's what they've got underneath them basically so that when it comes to uh, the race this weekend there's, there's no issues and they can get the best possible start they, that they need. So Billy, while we are talking about the cars, we've got some questions coming in with regards to how these W Series cars compare to the likes of F3 or F2. Well, these cars are, are used in Formula Regional Championships, so they're, in terms of the pace and the performance in these cars, they're slightly slower than the FIA F3 cars, and then obviously the FIA F3 cars are slightly slower than the FIA F2. It's a ladder system that helps progress the drivers towards, obviously, the fastest uh, single-seat cars, which are Formula 1. So these are, I think these cars are really good for the W Series drivers to learn in, um, obviously using like the Hankook tyres and stuff like that. Um, but it gives the drivers a real chance to sort of learn their craft in a, in a single-seater car. And like you say, Naomi, it's the driving style is different to a lot of other race championships and cars out there. Uh, and it gives the, the drivers, a lot of the drivers that compete in Formula Regional end up progressing into Formula 3 as a result of doing well in that championship. So I think the ultimate goal for a lot of the W Series drivers is to progress from the likes of these cars into Formula 3 and Formula 2 it, with the aim of making Formula 1 it obviously is a long-term goal. So now, I know we don't like talking about this topic. Some people think it's boring. Some people think it's very interesting. It's the topic of tyres. Billy, let's chat tyres for a second. So this weekend, the drivers have got two sets allocated to them. I presume that they are using carryover tyres from Miami at the beginning of the session. I haven't really seen anyone go in for new boots. I think that little red flag session may have put a bit of a spanner in the works in everyone's strategies for this session. But how would you approach this? I've, from what I heard from the drivers, the tyre deck was starting to appear sort of around lap six. Typically, this Hancock tyre is a pretty hard tyre and it lasts really long. So given the fact that it's, you know, having a lot more tyre deck here on this track, how do you think they'll, you know, change the way that they, or, or the timings of when they put the new boots on? Well, I think, obviously, with so many race series here this weekend, for those of you that don't know, F1, F2, F3 and W Series are here this weekend competing. And what that means is there's going to be a lot of rubber that goes down with the heat that's here at, uh, in Barcelona. There's going to be a lot of rubber that is laid across the weekend. So the track conditions are going to change quite dramatically from now in practice to qualify, even to qualifying at the end of today. And then obviously uh, when it comes to the race as well. So I think for the drivers, particularly with strategy, obviously practice doesn't count for anything. So they'll be trying to, like you say, Naomi, use carryover tyres and not take any life out of tyres that they want to save for qualifying in the race. 
and then the strategy in qualifying uh, I'm assuming is going to be fairly similar to Miami where they sort of go out on the, the new set their first new set set a benchmark lap come in sort of that low in the middle of qualifying where everyone's getting things set just seeing uh, the Rea Marti heading back to uh, the W Series paddock so she's obviously going to be a little bit disappointed just chatting to what looks like her engineer there um, and then for the second part of qualifying they will just put the, the, the set and their second set of tyres on and that's normally where we see the best lap times towards the end of qualifying session like I say when all that rubber has been laid down the most possible amount of grip is on track and then it's just down to the drivers to um, to set the cars up so that when the track hits those conditions that it's right for those conditions that's for me what's going to be probably the biggest challenge this weekend is in practice now obviously on the older tyres the car may feel great and you might feel really dialed in and happy with the balance of the car but a few hours later a lot of rubber down on the circuit the, the track's going to change the handling of the car's going to change you might have a good amount of front end grip in practice now and it might come to qualifying and you have too much and the rear sliding around all over the place so trying to preempt that and set the car up to perform well and in qualifying where it counts that's going to be the trickiest part i think it's very much untread territory tonight in qualifying especially for nerea marty who's not had the chance to complete the session Billy, let's talk about that for a second, because as a driver, you know, I'm sure you can relate, and so can I. It is very frustrating when you get stuck in a gravel trap like that, because it's a small mistake. Nothing crazy happened, but you're beached, and you just that just ends your session. Yeah, going into a gravel trap, spinning off, and just that feeling when you, you go to put the throttle down and just think, oh, I'm just going to be able to drive out of here, and you just feel the rear wheels sink into the gravel trap, and you know I'm not getting out of here. It's a demoralizing feeling, and particularly for Norea there, the mistake was so small, and it was just actually, in fact, she wasn't setting a quick lap time or anything. I was trying to really um, do anything particularly different or special. She was just overtaking a car offline, misjudged the amount of grip that was there, and as a result, you know, that's her session over. And uh, it, it's brutal, the, the gravel traps like that is, but that's motorsport, and little mistakes like that can count. So this is one of a few remaining circuits on the F1 calendar that's actually surrounded by, as you can see in these pictures, grass and gravel. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Billy? How do you feel about a gravel trap? I think a gravel trap, I, I personally like gravel traps. I know that like, they can have their, their downfall, like where little mistakes like that can ruin sessions and stuff like that. But I think in terms of like track limits and not being able to gain advantages, if there's gravel there, you, you'll tend to see most drivers manage to, to do the corner without trying to gain an advantage from going off. They, they know that that puts a real limit on where they can position their cars and it makes it a fairly level playing field. As we see now the drivers coming on the exit of this corner in particular here, that, that for me, if that was a tarmac runoff, you might see a few different line variances and drivers sort of exploring the limits, shall we say, a little bit more. So I quite like it. I think it's, it's it's slightly old school, but it seems to do the job. But uh, yeah, people avoid gravel for a good reason because it's not fast to go through a gravel trap. <laughs> no, it isn't indeed. Well, looking at the pecking order at the moment, it's Jamie Chadwick out front. No surprises there. Belen Garcia, who we were expecting a great performance from this weekend so far, seems to be very comfortable in her car on her home track. And then it is followed by Abby Pulling. So. Not your usual suspects at the front this weekend, which, you know, changes things up a little bit. Yeah, Abby pulling there, running fairly well, and we can see we're on board with her now going through the last chicane, the end of the lap. The, the end of the lap's going to be, I think, where drivers can make a real difference. A little bit of a, a wide moment uh, for Bella Garcia there. Now she's coming through turn 10, committed. In these cars, I imagine that in qualifying, that's going to be completely flat. Um, it's going to be on the limit, that's for sure. Uh, it's obviously around here as well. It depends on like wind direction as to what these corners are like. Wind direction in a single seat can make a huge difference to how you approach a corner. And at the minute, they've got a slight headwind into 10, which actually will help them to take that corner flat. So talking about that big sausage curb that Belen just um, struggled over a little bit, I was filming a little bit of content on track last night uh, around 6 p.m. and Carlos Sainz and his crew were on a track run and it was interesting because, you know, usually when we do a track walk, you walk the racing line as much as you can. Carlos was very much running the racing line as well, but decided to run right over that yellow sausage curb. So I think, you know, it is it is something to look out for for the drivers, especially in that corner. It 
when you take that the, the first part of the chicane wrong, it's very common that you run wide. Um, have you driven very much on this track, Billy? Yeah, so I raced here back in 2019 in uh, Euro Formula F3, and um, yeah, I, I experienced that in, in both conditions. We had one race that year in the wet and one race in the dry, and uh, that sausage curb is tricky, and it's. The thing is, as well, what people don't, sometimes it's hard to see from the cameras, is it's steep, it's uphill at exit from that corner, and if you make a slight mistake, have a bit of oversteer, go over that curve, it can kill momentum and speed, and particularly when turn 10 is then completely flat out as well. That just adds to that nightmare, because you just then carry that loss of time and speed the whole way up the straight after turn 10, so it can cost you a lot of lap time. We're seeing here Fabian Volven, so she went over that curb as well. Although this year, I will say, it doesn't look as aggressive. It looks like drivers can ride up it a little bit. You just can't put your middle of your car on that sausage curb because then it starts to bottom out and you'll lose a lot of lap time. Yes, I've driven a 24-hour race on this track, and I must say that probably is and becomes the most difficult corner to drive through, especially once you do get some tire dirt. Because, as you said, if you just take the wrong line a little bit through the first part of the chicane, it just pushes you wide. and. And if you do get the slightest bit of bottoming out on that sausage curb, there's another one of our famous gravel traps just there waiting for you. But yeah, it is it is definitely, you know, a track where, where there are three overtaking opportunities, turn one, turn five, and turn ten. So if you get that one wrong, uh, you're very much in danger when it comes to the end of the straight in turn ten. Just having a little look here at Emma Kimmelinen. Uh, she's gone green in the first sector, so that means it's a personal best for her. Down in 13th at the minute, uh, just ahead of her Puma teammate, uh, Teresa Babakova, uh, in 14th. So not the best start to practice for her. She'll be looking to improve, because she showed a lot more promise uh, pace-wise in Miami than she currently is now. Just looking at the times a little bit, we've got four drivers that have broken into the 1 minute 45. So Alice Powell is the newest driver to break that 1 minute 46 barrier and dip underneath that. Um, so we've got Jamie Chadwick, Belen Garcia, Abby Pulling and Alice Powell. Marta Garcia, another of our Spanish drivers that we haven't mentioned yet. She's running in P5, so that's a strong performance for her. Uh, but yeah, Jamie Chadwick and Belen Garcia have got a couple of temps clear of everyone else at the minute, so they look like the strongest two so far. Yeah, looking like we've got two of our three Spanish drivers in the top five for now. Obviously, Nerea Marti's not any longer in the session, so uh, it would be worth knowing where she would be up there. She obviously showed a very strong performance in Miami. So she's got the pace, young driver, but definitely very driven, motivated, and committed. Um, look, having a look at the tires there, I think something worth mentioning, it's not common to see Emma Kimmelainen down in 13th, and I wonder how much that has to do with how used her tyres may be from Miami. She obviously had a great run out there. Sometimes when drivers are a little bit more aggressive, there is a little bit more tyre deg, and that could be playing into why she is down in 13th at the moment. Yeah, I think that there'll be part, it partly will be down to the fact that I think Emma Kimmelainen is an aggressive driver. We saw that in Miami with her, her overtakes on the brake, and she was going for a lot of late overtaking maneuvers and really putting a lot of strain through those tyres, a few lockups as a part of those maneuvers that she was able some to pull off and some not. Um, so she's an aggressive, aggressive driver when it comes to the racing, and sometimes that can take a bit, bit more life out of the tyres. And this is practice. This is all going to change for qualifying in terms of there will be the level will be reset. There will be on new tyres, and then there will be no advantage from a slightly fresher, older set that we carried over from Miami. So that will um, that advantage that some of the drivers may have for this session will disappear for qualifying. Driver we haven't spoken much about is Emily De Host. It's great to see, you know, some of the some of the rookies doing, you know, a lot better out here this weekend than they had done in Miami. Uh, Emily, Juju Noda, um, looking good for them so far. Yeah, looking looking promising there. Right at the minute, 11th and 12th on the cusp of being inside that top 10, which is obviously the top 10 in W Series score the points. So in, when it comes to qualifying later, if you can get a slot in that top 10, it makes a, it gives you a huge confidence boost that you're on for a strong possibility of points. So I'm sure that will be a good and uh, I think a realistic target for the two rookies that are new to the championship. Obviously, as racing drivers, they'll be wanting to fight for pole position every time they go out. That will be their goal. Um, but in terms of at the minute with their experience levels and how much they've just compared to the other drivers, the front runners that are more experienced in these cars, and that they haven't got that themselves. So I think top 10 would be a good realistic aim uh, for the, the rookies this weekend. 
Yeah, an impressive start for Chloe Chambers out in Miami. Another one of our rookie drivers finished 10th in both races. She did have a penalty after the first race, so didn't actually end up scoring points for that. But on track, she was 10th. Uh, and that's a pretty decent start for a rookie in, in the W Series Championship, where there's a lot of strong talent. Yeah, it was Miami. It was a home race, obviously. Um, her first weekend in W Series, so there was a lot going on for, for Chloe that weekend, a lot of pressure, and she dealt with it really well. I was really impressed with how she carried herself through the weekend. Didn't see any major mistakes of the, the jump out to mind from, from her across that weekend. So she was a, a real um, surprise and top performer for me from the first weekend out in, in Miami. So I think she'll be hoping for more of the same, if not higher up the order. But at the minute, it does look like she's struggling. She has set a personal best on this lap in the first sector. So I think that we can expect to see an improvement to come. Just looking at the top of the, the pecking order though, Jamie Chadwick, not only is she the fastest driver on track at the minute, but her lap time that she's just set on the previous lap is also good enough to put her first. So she's very consistent, only a few hundredths between the laps that she's able to set, even with these older tires and the degradation. So she's found a good rhythm and she's obviously fairly happy with the balance of her car she's got out there. So there you have it then. A couple of drivers still needing to cross the checkered flag, but the session has come to an end. And this looks like it will be our pecking order so far for the day. As we mentioned, there's probably a lot of factors coming into play between now and this evening's qualifying check session. So expect some changes. Uh, we also need to see what Nerea Marti is able to deliver. She wasn't able to in the session. There's a little lockup from Jamie Chadwick there, showing that the tyres are maybe coming to the end of their life cycle. Yeah, that was down at turn five, the, the downhill left-hander. And I'd say that's probably one of the trickiest corners where you expect to see those lockups here with Barcelona because it's downhill, there's a camber to it. So sometimes when you're braking and you're slightly turning into the apex, the, the wheel gets unloaded. And I think, especially in qualifying, when people are pushing that braking point later and later, there, I think we'll see more and more of those slight little lock-up moments. You can get away with a small lock-up on the way in there because of the nature of the corner, and it's not always important to be right down by the white line there because of the straight, the way the exit's quite wide. You can take a few different lines as a bit of variance, but obviously, ideally, not having any of those little lock-ups that we saw from Jamie Chadwick, but she's top of the timing. She, I don't think she'll be too worried about um, little lock-ups like that. Hate to put you on the spot, Billy. Um, I know we've said there might be some changes, but predictions? Predictions. This is always dangerous, Naomi, because uh, it's it's a complete guessing game at this point. But I'd probably say Jamie Chadwick there looked really consistent to me. Um, I expect things to change in terms of how the cars will feel for these drivers in qualifying. But I would probably say I expect Jamie Chadwick to at least be in the top three. Uh, I think Marta Garcia is one as well that could be on the card. She was fifth there, so she's seen, we've seen some promise from her. And she had good race pace, particularly out in Miami, um, which I was impressed with. So she's building a bit of momentum behind her as well. And I'd probably say Abby Pulling as well is a, a dark horse to, for pole position this evening as well. She's shown some good pace there. Um, she's well in the mix of when it comes down to the times that were set then. Interesting. OK, well, if you would like to know what's going to happen, you're obviously going to have to tune in to qualifying later today. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. We know I've spoken to Alice earlier this weekend, and although there are three overtaking opportunities, she said to me she thinks qualifying is going to be imperative because although there are those three opportunities on the track, she doesn't think overtaking will be that easy. So I think the drivers will be putting some pressure on themselves to get that lap in during qualifying. Yeah, qualifying here in Barcelona has always been an important part of the weekend. And it, the same goes for the support series and obviously W Series being a part of that. So when it comes to this weekend, that qualifying lap being really dialed in and in the zone, that's going to that's gonna really count. So here are your results for today's practice session. Quickest today was Jamie Chadwick in her generating car, followed by Belen Garcia, the local lady, and then Abby Pulling in third. Uh, Alice Powell, her coach, right behind her. Probably is going to need a little bit of coaching from Abby this time around. <laughs> and then Marta Garcia, Fabian Bolvend. Fabian, you know, constantly showing the pace, but really is going to have to put it together this weekend because we didn't have a great result out in Miami. Yeah, she, uh, she showed good pace, but yeah, she'll be looking to bounce back. 
and then just coming outside of the top 10 we've got Emily Dehurst, Emma Kimilainen, Juju Noda, Abby Pulling, Abby Eaton in 14th, Teresa Bobichkova 15th, Chloe Chambers 16th, Bianca Bustamante in 17th and Nerea Marti unfortunately due to her being stuck in the gravel uh, was unable to finish the session. So that's it from our practice session. Okay, that's it from us today. Make sure to join us this evening for our qualifying session.